Fox News alert, making Donald Trump's presidency official. Right now, electors in New York, Pennsylvania, Virginia, North Carolina, and West Virginia are among the first and now the very well-known Electoral College to meet in their state capitals. Their job on this Monday is to choose a new president. But Democrats are launching a last-ditch effort to deny President-elect Donald Trump the White House. How is that going to go? This is Outnumbered. I'm Harris Faulkner. Here today, Megan McCain, Fox News political and legal analyst Ebony Williams, National Review reporter Catherine Temp, and today's hashtag one lucky guy, the host of Making Money with Charles Payne <laughs> on the Fox Business Network. Charles Payne himself, Outnumbered, and he's wearing some frogs. Yeah, yes. these yeah. are gorgeous. You like this? Yeah, I'm yeah, hoping emerald. that before the show's over, you guys would turn a frog into a prince. Aww. Yes. So then there'll be three princes, one on each sleeve and you in the middle. There You're already go. a prince. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. All right, shall we move? Oh, let's do it. Okay, let's start Lots with the news. Cover. Today, 538 members of the Electoral College are expected to ratify the election results of November 8th and elect Donald Trump America's 45th president. 306 of them, as you may know, are pledged to Mr. Trump. 232 pledged to Hillary Clinton. Today's vote is seen as largely symbolic. But Republican electors say they've been inundated by emails, phone calls, and in some cases, death threats to change their votes. And this development, top Trump aides are accusing critics of trying to use today's vote drama to delegitimize Mr. Trump's presidency. Incoming White House Chief of Staff Reince Priebus told Fox News Sunday the harassment has got to stop. Look, we, we expect everything to fall in line. We've got one particular individual in Texas without a faithless elector statute in Texas. But other than that, we're very confident that everything is going to be very smooth tomorrow. And this harassment from groups like MoveOn.org and the Democrat Party should stop. And that's what the American people demand. And as he is wont to do, President-elect Trump hit up social media to say he's being held to a double standard. On Twitter, he said, if my many supporters acted and threatened people like those who lost the election are doing, they would be scorned and called terrible names. Doug McElway live with the news for us from Washington. Doug. Good afternoon, Harris. As much as Democrats and many pundits are making a big deal of attempts to force electors to change their vote, the chances of that actually happening are slim indeed. In the history of the United States, electors have voted for the candidates of their choice 99% of the time. But then again, we've never seen in modern history the kind of tremendous pressure that's being put on GOP electors to change their vote or to become what is called faithless electors, many even receiving death threats. Well, the worst thing is probably the most uncomfortable thing is that uh, one day I had uh, a couple of emails from uh, the same person that said that they were going to follow me and they're going to make us very uncomfortable. The next day on the freeway, I was actually looked to my right and I see people following me actually with their phone up against the window videoing. They slowed down behind. They got in front of my car. When I was at a traffic light, they were taking pictures. Following death threats in Pennsylvania, some electors have even been offered police protection to cast their votes at the state capitol where demonstrators, as you can see, are awaiting them. Still only one GOP elector that we know of has pledged to change his vote. He's Chris Suprin from Texas. Since I've come out, the CIA has had a report in the Washington Post that says that Russia was not trying to undermine our elections, but they were actively working to help Donald Trump become our president. For too long, Electoral College members have worked as a rubber stamp. Well, I'm going to tell you now, I will not be a rubber stamp for the Kremlin. There are 538 electors in total, the same number as there are representatives and senators in Congress, if you include the three electors from the District of Columbia. After their votes are tallied today in various state capitals, they'll be sent to the National Archives and to the House and Senate, where they will be counted. And the winner announced on January 6th, the last step, of course, the swearing in of the new president on January 20th, and we fully expect that to be Donald Trump. Harris, back to you. Doug, thank you very much. Uh, you know, Charles, as we look across the color spectrum, perhaps the new fall color for Democrats is desperate. This <laughs> seems desperate, threatening people. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Uh, the, this morning, at Un the Union Square, people know it's a big train station in New York. There were 50,000 posters of people whining after the election, comparing it to 9-11. They've decided to put that away, and they're going to keep it in storage. Now the new thing is, for forget whining, we're going to go on the offensive, even physically intimidating people who don't agree with us. Listen, we know it's all about delegitimizing the Donald Trump presidency, because even if for some crazy reason, 37 electors say, hey, we're faithless, it would go to the House, 
uh, controlled by the GOP, so Donald Trump would be the president. So in other words, what do they really want out of this? I had the misfortune of interviewing Christine, Christine Pelosi, and I got to tell you something. This is the most belligerent, arrogant, and I got to tell you, selfish act that I've seen in a long time. For a group that said to Donald Trump, please accept the results of the election, they're certainly being big hypocrites. And that's I, Nancy Pelosi's daughter, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I Thanks agree that it's desperate. Out. It's pathetic. You know, it's over. It's over. Sometimes when it's over, you can be tempted if you really don't want it to be over to keep emailing and keep begging for it not to be over. But never are, works. Are we still talking about the election? We're or talking about love life? We're talking about both. It sounds like an ex-boyfriend in college. It's, it's true. I learned. You know, I may have learned it from that, but mm -hmm. it does apply here also. Right. Trust makes you look pathetic. Doesn't change. Threats the didn't work. So, doesn't work. No. In the mid 1800s was the last time that we saw more than one person stand up and flip their vote, become that faithless elector that yeah. you talked about outside of the death of a candidate. It's been that long. It would be that rare for just not that one man in Texas that we publicly know about who said he's going to defy and not vote for Trump as he's pledged to do. He's going to do something different. If one other person joined him in doing that and flipping their vote, it would be legendary, historic. So obviously extremely rare. What are Democrats hoping to do? Well, I think there's a lot of pressure from Hollywood. We talked about that PSA last mm -hmm. week with Martin Sheen and Deborah Messing. Michael Moore is now saying that he will pay any fines for any electorate. We've got that, actually. Okay, this tweet, that. let's pop that up. Let's pop up Michael Moore's tweet. Because, I mean, apparently, you know, when things go wrong, all these cele celebrities who threaten to leave the country now have just taken to Twitter. I think it's really nothing more than a publicity stunt at mm -hmm. this point that they want to show that there's sort of like insolent uh, protesting going on. But I would implore these Hollywood celebrities as you just said, this would be historical, and I would say it would throw our democracy into chaos. Mm. And these people, if you know anything, even, even the most cursory knowledge of electorates, they're, they have a lot of party loyalty. That's why they become electorates. That man that was uh, we showed the clip of is the head of the RNC in Arizona that was getting harassed. These people, unless you have literally world-changing American history type news that shows why they should change their vote, it's just not going to happen. So, Ebony, I come to you for the law. <laughs> that makes me happy, Harry. Because, I mean, you, you're, you're yeah. representing the bench, if yeah. you will. Thank you. Um, so, my question for you is that none of this behavior is legal. You cannot threaten anybody in this way. This is not free speech. So what would you say as an attorney? Sure. So as we're listening to all of this kind of um, rhetoric and all the heightened emotions, the thing that stuck out to me most in, in what we're hearing are the fact that people are riding in their cars, many of them with their families, their children, who knows, and, and they are being threatened, Harris, and that is a real criminal act. It, we cannot have any tolerance for it, regardless of your political opinions, regardless of how frustrated and upset you might be at this election result. Elections do have consequences. We hear that over and over again, and this is the result. And instead of taking this time, and really reflecting as a party on what went wrong, what could have been done better, what lessons you can learn for 2018 and 2020, you're wasting all kinds of important and valuable time trying to delegitimize. But I will say this around hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. I, I don't cry that many tears for President-elect Trump around the issue of delegitimizing because he did spend considerable time trying to delegitimize the presidency of Barack Obama. He has since apologized for it and moved on from it. But but that, that delegitimizing, it helps no one. And I really hope we can all take a lesson from that. Well, and we didn't see you know, back then, people doing what they're doing now, no, that's not a publicly, thing. trying yeah. to change the electoral college results, sure. so on and so forth. All right, we'll move on.